of uh, new controls like the wizard control. I'll be covering field validators and also the SMTP component for sending a piece of email. So we'll combine these various techniques to build a simple web page that you can add to your site to collect some kind of feedback from your users. So we'll start by creating a new website. I'll call it feedback. Now we'll do most of our work in design mode where I'm going to start by dropping in this new component called the wizard. To make it look a little nicer, let me turn on auto formatting. I'll choose colorful. And I'll need a little bit more room than this, so I'll stretch it out. Now unfortunately when I stretch it out, there's way too much space here for the left side. So I can modify the properties right here. And you can see that this component is divided into two parts. The left side is the list of steps that the wizard will go through, and the right side is where you put the, uh, the text boxes and the things where you get the feedback from the user. And at the bottom, it manages the next and previous buttons for you. So what I'd like to do first is take that sidebar style and change the width to something a little bit smaller. I'll change it to 150 pixels should do. And finally, the step style, which is the area over here, I happen to know that to make this look good we want to change the vertical alignment to the top. Okay, now I have a space to play in. Let's first add the four steps to our dialog. So if I go into add remove wizard steps, you can see I have two we have two for us already. Let me remove these and I'll start I'll just add our four. So the first step we'll call um, we'll collect the name and email. So this will be our contact info that we'll get from our user. The next step will be the comments. The third step will be a summary of what we're going to submit to the website. Now, because this is the pretty much the final step before something happens, I'll change this to finish. So this will give us a finish button on the page. And then this final one here is the step that you'll see when the entire process is complete. So that'll be a page where we'll link someplace else. Okay, so now we have the basic layout of our site. Let's, um, you can see as I click here, it, the buttons change to show you what the user is going to see next and previous. Here we have the finish button. So on the first page, let's just collect the name and email. And I'll do that um, to help us with the layout. Let me insert a table that is, I think three rows is fine and three columns. Actually, that's, that's just right. I'll put a little padding in here. So we'll have the first name here. Actually, I'll just call, I'll say your name, email, and I'll use this area here for, for something else in just a second. So for the name and email address, we'll use a text box for both of these. And I'll give it something meaningful, text, name. And we need another text box for the email. Now what I'm going to do with this third column right here, that's where I'll put the field validation controls. So down here in a separate area under validation, we have several different components that we can drag on to constrain our, our form or dialog to only accept a certain kind of input. Now for email, it's going to be, I'm sorry, for your name, it's going to be pretty easy. We just want that to be, uh, we'll use the required field validator. That means you have to enter something there. And I need to, for all these controls, you'll see you need to associate it with a control to validate. And here we have two controls, email and name. So I'll choose name. And this is a neat trick. If I change the, um, first of all, the error message to um, please enter your name. Now that's kind of a lot of text to display right here. What you can do is simply use the, uh, put an asterisk where it says text and that will be shown if the user did not enter the correct information. And this error message will be displayed right here where we have the validation summary. So if I drop the validation summary here, and let me merge these two cells to give it a little bit more room. So if there's a problem with the site, if there's a problem with the form, all the error messages will be collected in one space right here. And you'll see that comes in handy because for the email, we're going to use two validation controls. First, we'll use the required field validator, just like the other one. Not exactly friendly messages, but it gets the point across. And I'll put the little star. And we need one more. The, we're going to use the regular expression validator. 
and if we look down here under the validation expression we have an ellipsis we have some built-in regular expressions here that represent valid um, valid inputs we'll choose internet mail email address set it up to the control to validate which is email and error message will say enter a valid email address and change the text now I forgot to associate this control so let me just do that email okay this should be good so we have three validation controls on two inputs and we're using the validation summary let's, let's test this control so right off the bat before we do anything let's see what happens if we just try to go to the next page good so we have to have a name and an email address so once I start typing something here and tab away watch that star goes away that's because there's some client-side validation going on at the same time if I go next you see that one error message goes away so now I can type something in for email but it's more than just required it has to be in a specific format So I'll try the foo at bar.com perfect so now we move on to the second step and that's where I will show you another kind of validation control if we go to comments let's uh, insert a table layout again here we'll have space for our comments and also a rating so now the comments we need a text box and this time we'll turn on the multi-line option and let me make a little more space for it and for the rating area I'll also use a text box and for the comments I need to give it a better control name okay for these two we're going to use different validations the, under the comments we'll use the custom validator now I'm going to do something kind of funny here I'm going to say that comments are limited to no more than 10 characters which is kind of silly but it's going to make it easier to test so in order to hook this up because that's not built in here as a validation control I need to again I need to still map it to the control to validate comments but I can handle a server-side event called server validate so if I double click on that, that this code will be executed when the um, when the page posts back and this is where we'll put in our code to check and see if it's good so I can do if text comments if the text itself if the length is greater than 10 characters then I'll say that it's not valid and do that by using this argument right here so I can type args dot is valid equals false otherwise it's okay and we still have to do everything else like we did with the other controls we have to set the text property and everything else um, right here the error message I'll put no more than and set the text equal to star and this also means I'll need that summary validation control I'll do the same thing by merging these two cells and drop it in here and let's see this one work now if I by leaving this page on the comments right here watch when I bring it up it's going to go directly to that step so it doesn't start a contact info that's important to remember before you finish make sure you reset your page back to contact info but if I try to uh, go forward with too many characters we see that web page flash we actually made a round trip to the server and you can see that it says no more than 10 characters if I just put in a couple it works fine but let me try something else watch if I put in a lot of characters and go forward I'm getting a server round trip now if you want to prevent a round trip to the um, server you can also inject a little bit of JavaScript client-side code see right here it says client validation function if I type in um, validate comments this just gives it a uh, it's gonna look for a piece of JavaScript on the client and we can write that here in source mode now we don't get a lot of assistance here in writing this but that's alright I think I can handle it we need a, a regular JavaScript script block so I'll choose the language and as JavaScript and I need a simple function called validate comments 
and it takes two parameters. I, I just happen to know because by looking up the help file, we need two one called cinder and another args. And let me get some space here. And like this, like the server side function that we did, we can say if args it has a value, and if the length is greater than 10, then I'll set args is valid equal to false. Otherwise, just like the server code, set it to true, and that should do it. So let's test our client code. So now when I'm in here and I have too many characters and tab away, I get the asterisk right away. When it's less than 10, it goes away. Cool. So the last validation control I want to put on here is the range validation. So we'll for this rating, this one's pretty easy. We'll just drop in the range validator and associate it with that control, the rating. And I'll say use um, uh, this will be easy. Uh, use a number between 1 and 5. I set a maximum value of 5 and a minimum of 1 and bring that up in a browser. Try it with a uh, 589. And there we go. It's not accepting it. We can go forward with a 2. Perfect. Okay, so now we've got our different field validations. We have our different controls. Let's say for the summary page, we normally here's where you'd put, um, we would show an example of the email we're about to send, but I'm just going to leave it alone. There's, you can refer back to any of the controls on the page from this step pretty easily. Instead, what I want to do is handle the finish button. And for that, right here where it says finish button click, if I double click that, that will create a handler for us. And this code will be called when the user wants to uh, move on and execute the final step. So I have some um, code I'm going to copy here from the clipboard. And this is a helper method I wrote to send the mail. Now, it's complaining right here. And the reason why I want to show you this is because we uh, the, the SMTP components are all handled now in a new namespace. The namespace was moved to system.net.mail. So here I already have our Exchange server set up and everything should work fine. So in the Finish button click, what I'll do is just simply call Send Mail and make it from the, uh, from the email text and we'll send the comments. Now I don't have any kind of error, error checking here or anything, but I think that's fine for this sample. So let's close all these pages and go try it out. Ah, remember I have to reset the form back to the contact info so I get the whole thing. Oops. <laughs> Simple. How's that? Okay, now when I hit finish it sends the piece of email. Now this would be the page where we would show something like it's complete. And when I go to my email, there we go. We have the email fooatbar.com and there's our simple. So it's pretty easy to send a piece of email and it's pretty easy to set up your, your wizard page. It would be nice if I had something a little bit nicer looking there, but I think you get the idea. So you can see that with a little bit of custom code and some validation controls, you can build a pretty functioning wizard component of your own.